Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Recently, Traders Galaxy sent me a copy of Bot War to review, and in my playthrough video for the game, I showed an out-of-the-box experience with unpainted miniatures. However, I really like these miniatures, so I wanted to get some paint on them. So today, I'm going to show you how I painted Moray. And Moray is one of four brothers who all have the same paint scheme. So this color scheme will work for a few different models, and in fact, you get Moray and Stingray in the starter set, and I painted them both at the same time. You can see here that I started by spraying the miniature with Corax White. You can undercoat with black, but undercoating with white, you'll get a brighter finish. And because this is an 80s cartoon inspired game, I wanted everything to be a bit brighter. And then I've got my Avalon Sunset. I'm going to thin it down slightly and I'm going to apply two coats of this over the whole miniature. The primary color on the miniature is the yellow. So it makes sense to get a good base coat of yellow down over everything. And then switching to Agrax Earthshade, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking he's going to slap that over the whole model because that's what I normally do. But actually, no, what I'm doing here with the Agrax Earthshade is I'm going to line in all of the deepest recesses on the miniature. There are some bands around the leg that need it. And also there are some lines on the wings. And just by applying some Agrax Earthshade in there, you get some nice definition, which looks really good for that sort of cartoony style and uh, makes everything pop just a little bit more. And it doesn't matter if you go over the yellow a little bit because we will do more to that later on. I'm then switching to Hexos Pale Sun, which is one of the Citadel dry paints. And I'm just doing a heavy dry brush over the whole miniature. This is going to hit all of the edges, bring out some detail, highlight certain areas. With that done, I am switching to Cassandora Yellow and I'm going to apply this over the whole miniature. I've thinned it down ever so slightly because I don't want it to be a really, really strong yellow. I just wanted to enrich the colors that were already there and also add a little bit of definition to some of the finer details. Just being careful not to get too much pooling in any of the recesses. I'm now switching to Goblin Green. Any mid bright green will do. And I'm going to thin this down slightly and I'm going to apply two coats over all of the green areas basically following the color scheme from the unit card that comes in the starter set um, with one minor difference the grills on the forearms are supposed to be black according to the official paint scheme but i wanted them to be a little bit brighter so i've done those in green as well but basically you're looking at the knees the missiles the weapons the cockpit on the front of the miniature the turbines in the chest and the ridges on the helmets. I'm then switching to Athonian Camo Shade and I'm going to apply this carefully to all of that green that I've painted. Again, I just want to bring out the details here. And at this point, um, the miniature's looking very dark and not very 80s cartoon at all. So I decided what I needed to do was some high contrast stuff. I found the brightest green and the brightest yellow in my collection. We're using Moot Green here and I'm applying it in thin coats over all of the green areas to um, gradually build up the color. I've thinned these down quite a lot. So um, we are looking at two or three coats in some cases. And by doing it in those thin coats, you can feather it out towards the edges. You can um, gradually blend into the darker recesses of the model. And of course, I'm doing edge highlighting as well with this color on all of those green areas just to make those details pop, to try and capture some of that 80s animated style. And there's no real rhyme or reason to this. It's just eyeballing it until you like the transition between the shades of coloring. And you basically end up with what you've got there. I'm now switching to Ogre in Camo and I've thinned this out a lot again. And I'm going to try and um, make the cockpit look a little bit more like glass. And I'm doing that by, I'm painting about half of the cockpit with the watered down Ogrin. And I'm going to apply a few layers again to gradually make the color stronger towards the top part of the cockpit uh, and slowly transition into the moot green. And that's going to require a couple of glazes to get that. And now I'm switching to Keramite White here. 
and I'm going to thin this out a lot. You should really use a layer paint rather than the base paint, but my uh, white layer paint had dried out. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to apply a thin white line around the top side of the cockpit, and then I'm going to thin the white out a lot and just try and transition blend it in. And you basically end up with that. We're now switching to Flash Gits Yellow, and I'm going to thin this out a lot, and I'm going to apply layer after layer on all of the yellow plates. I want to leave the, the darker orange yellow in all of the recesses so you get really nice lines and contrasts on the model. I want to build up the colors so they're really strong and vibrant, but also transition into those darker colors as you reach the edges of the plates. With that all done, it's time to switch to Dawnstone and we're going to paint in all the bits of the black on the official color scheme. So that's the feet, um, the areas around the top of the legs, the hands and parts of the gun as well. Just being really, really careful at this point not to go over any of the yellow because if you do get some of this gray over the yellow, it's going to be a bit of a pain to reapply yellow again. It's, uh, it's difficult to paint that yellow over the darker colors. With that all done, I'm picking out a wolf gray, a sort of bluish gray color, and I'm going to very, very carefully with some thin down gray um, color in the face. With that done, and when that's dry, we're gonna to switch to non oil, and we're going to apply non oil carefully over all of those gray dawnstone areas. And this is going to darken it all down and also provide that definition without making it all black on those areas. I didn't want to go for a black on those areas. I'm switching back to Wolf Grey and this is just to apply a very light highlight to the nose to pick out the eyes and any other detailing on the face. There's not actually a lot of detailing to the faces because they're very angular and robotic, but just picking out the eyes and the nose and uh, the tops of the cheeks just, um, just makes the face pop a little bit more. I've now switched back to Moot Green and this is to very carefully apply green to the moustache and the beard because this is one of those weird robots that has a moustache and a beard. So I'm going to fill that in. And with that done, um, I'm going to switch to Abaddon Black and I'm going to paint two coats of Thin Down Abaddon Black around the rim of the base. I usually put black around the base on my miniatures. I think it looks nice, finishes them off. Other people use browns or greys. Whatever colour you fancy, really. And then I'm going to apply Sterland Mud over the whole base um, to apply texture and colour. When that is dry, I'm going to apply Agrax Earthshade over that brown, over that sterling mud. And then that paint job is finished. And it's time to move on to the varnishing stage. And varnishing these models involves three steps. First of all, I sprayed the whole thing with the Munitorum varnish from Games Workshop, which gives the model a sort of satiny finish. When that's completely dried, I applied a coating of no shine over the base because I didn't want the mud and everything to look shiny at all and then finally I got some gloss varnish and I picked out the cockpit the actual glass part of the model to make that more reflective and shiny finally with all of that done all I had to do was add some static grass rubble flock all the usual stuff to the base to give it a little bit more interest but that's it for this painting guide if you like the look of these models and you would like to pick some up for yourself, if you look down in the video description, you will find a special promotional code for my channel. If you go to the Traders Galaxy website, that's tradersgalaxy.com.au, again, a link in the video description, and use that code, you will get 15% off of your purchases up until the 17th of September. The code won't work for battle mats and it will not work for items that have already been discounted, but otherwise you're going to get 15% off of anything that you purchase. Thanks to Traders Galaxy for setting that up for the channel.
But that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you have enjoyed it, please consider pressing the like button. If you have really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.